Hi, friends. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. This is immigration lawyer Latoya McBean Pompey. I am popping up on this Friday night live on Facebook. If anyone is out there watching, um, go ahead and hit me up in the comments and let me know that you're out there, you're watching. Friends, I, it's not easy to do these live videos because of time. And so my apologies for not announcing that I will be live, um, but with my schedule, the way that it is, it's not always easy to plan a live event. So if you're out there, go ahead and comment, give me some hearts, give me some likes, and I'm going to just go ahead and dive right in. In this video, I'm going to talk about the USCIS fee increases. Okay, and I see that um, Babs is watching, uh, Poor People's Governor, that's an interesting name, uh, but you're watching, thank you so much for watching, all the way from the Gambia. You know, Facebook is amazing. It connects me with people in Africa um, and people here in Queens. Well, in Queens, people here in Long Island. This is terrific. For anyone else who's out there watching, go ahead and comment and just say hello and let me know. Let me see your hearts. Let me know that you're out there so that um, uh, we, we can have a very nice interactive time tonight. Now, Friends, um, uh, I'm in Long Island. I'm in Long Island. So for those of you who uh, are looking for ways of contacting me and working with me, it's super easy. Just go on mcbeanlaw.com uh, and set up your vis video consultation, set up your phone consultation, or come out to Long Island and meet with me. Hi, Clara. Clara from Baltimore is watching. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about the fee increases, and I have two main tips that I want to share with you guys. Two main tips. So uh, I'm going to dive right in, share this video with your feed so that other people can be informed about what's going on. All right. So let's see. On November 14th, USCIS announced that um, they're raising their fees, friends. They're raising their fees on, on you, okay? Who, who are they raising fees on? They're raising fees primarily on those who are here in America who are seeking to get the green card here in America through adjustment of status, as well as those who are seeking to naturalize, get their uh, citizenship, um, and then also people who are seeking humanitarian relief, such as asylum. So those are the three primary groups of people who are impacted by this. So if you fall into one of those camps, friends, go ahead and share, listen in, take some notes. Uh, if you're commuting home from work, I hope you'll find this instructive. I want you to know that um, the government isn't playing around. They're not playing around, so we shouldn't play around. We should be very strategic and informed about what we do with respect to immigration, okay? You want to have a life here in America with your family. That's our goal, and so that's why I'm doing these videos so that you can be informed and have a life here permanent, permanently, permanent residence here in the United States with your family. So with respect to the fee increase, um, Let's talk about the main applications that are impacted by this. Firstly, those who are seeking to naturalize. Okay, so if you're here and you've applied for naturalization before, you know that the filing fee is in the 600 range, right? 640 to be exact. $640 is the current fee, application filing fee to naturalize and become a U.S. citizen. Now, under this proposed um, structure that the government um, has uh, uh, out here for us to consider, okay, the new fee will be $1,170 to apply for naturalization. That's huge. That's a huge, huge increase. We're talking about 83% hike. Um, in uh, the application filing fee for the uh, N-400, the, the naturalization application. That's, that's huge, okay? Um, so the naturalization application, the proposed fee increase 
goes from $640 to $1,100, $1,170. Huge increase. Now, let's talk about those who are seeking uh, a green card here in America through a process known as adjustment of status. Friends, I'd like for you to share this video with your feed and comment below and tell me where you're watching from. I've, I see that um, a few more people have joined us. Please comment and say, hey, I'm watching and where you're watching from. Now, Adjustment of status, friends, is the process of getting the green card here in America through this one-step process um, uh, in which, you, you know, you're basically, I'm not going to get into the eligibility of adjustment of status, that's not what this is about, but if you're eligible for adjustment of status, you're able to get the green card here. Now, the application filing fee, um, you know, there's the I-485, which is the application to adjust your status, and the current fee is $1,140. Now, under this proposed structure, that amount is actually decreasing, and I'm getting in the weeds here. I'm gonna get to the big point shortly, um, but basically they're knocking $20 off of the I-485, right? Dropping it down to $1,120. But the catch is this, friends, for anyone who's here in America, and you've uh, been through the adjustment of status process before or your relative has, you know that when you file for adjustment of status, you also file for your working permit, right? The EAD or the employment authorization document. And when you concurrently file the adjustment of status application with the employment application, the employment application is waived. There's no fee that you have to pay. Not so under this new structure. Under this new structure, you would need to pay for that I-765, and that new fee would be $490, and that's an increase because the current fee is $410. Also, as part of the application, the adjustment of status application packet, uh, one normally files for a travel document, all right, the I-131. And so you now have to, you have to pay for that, right, um, under this new structure, and that's $550, $585. So when you add all of that up, friends, the application to adjust your status, the work permit application, the travel um, document, um, uh, travel document fee, and it looks like, and then there's the biometrics fee, eighty-five dollars, from what I'm seeing here. Um, the total is two thousand one hundred and ninety-five dollars. Two thousand, two thousand one hundred and ninety-five dollars is the new filing fee for adjustment of status with the work permit, with the travel document, and for uh, and biometrics, $2,195. That's huge, huge, okay? And so that is an increase of 79% to go through that adjustment of status process if you wanna get your work permit, which you will want to get your work permit, the work authorization, right? Who, will, who applies for adjustment of status and doesn't seek that work permit? It goes hand in hand. Now you have to actually pay for that. Okay, so what else? Um, DACA, for those of you who are renewing DACA every two years, that cost has gone up as well. That application filing fee is $765. And then for those of you, uh, for people who will seek asylum, that uh, for the first time, uh, I, I believe in US history, um, you know, you're going to have to now pay a filing fee to seek asylum. And it's $50. It's nothing major, but it is still, uh, from what I understand, historic. At least that's what I've been hearing people say. It's historic. So to summarize, fee increases, um, application filing fee increases um, are being proposed. There's a 30-day comment period right now on these proposals. They haven't gone into effect yet, but um, nonetheless, what you're looking at is a, a impact primarily on those here in the United States. And to naturalize, to become a US citizen, that filing fee is going up to $1,170. And 
an 83% increase. For those of you who are going to adjust your status and submit all of the um, applications that go with it, right, so that you could get all those other benefits, right, that um, new filing fee in total is $2,195. DACA, DACA application fee will go up by uh, go up to seven hundred and sixty five dollars, and then finally the asylum fee, which is new, uh, will be fifty dollars. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now let's move on. What what's the point? Why am I doing this? Uh, what 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 do I want to share with you uh, through this live session? I want to share with you two major takeaways. Two major takeaways. The first is friends. Waiting to file for adjustment of status is a mistake. Waiting to file for naturalization is a mistake. And I know people who have been sitting on these applications for years. You're eligible, yet you haven't pulled the trigger. You're eligible to naturalize. It's been, you've been in the US for 10 years, seven years, six years, 20 years, yet you have not naturalized well you may have a very good reason for not doing so. Maybe you have a criminal history and you're concerned that if you apply for naturalization, um, you're gonna have a problem, right? Or you have tax issues or just general issues with your moral character and it will come up during that process and therefore you did not naturalize. Okay, I understand that, that makes sense. But for those of you out there who don't have any drama or skeletons or issues that you need to be concerned with, yet you've been sitting on naturalization, I want to share with you tonight that that's a mistake because the longer you wait, the more um, it's going to be, it's costlier, right? You're now faced with uh, this $1,170 filing fee if this goes through, okay? That's huge, right? Um, you're faced with more complexity that the Trump administration is thrown into this whole immigration process. Who knows what's coming next? Okay, so it's a mistake to sit and wait on all of these um, to, to file. If you're eligible for uh, adjustment of status, there's no reason why you should sit on that either. So if you started a process, you better you want to try to finish it very soon, friends. Um, if you started working with a lawyer and you um, haven't finished that process yet because you're in a, on a payment plan or whatever the reason is, you wanna hurry up and finish that process and get your, your adjustment of status application filed before the new fee goes into effect, okay? So friends, I don't have a date on when any of this is going into effect actually, I don't know. What I do know is that there's a 30 day period by which the public um, can comment on these fee increases and then we'll know the, the outcome, okay? Now, second thing I wanna share with you is I want you guys to see the bigger picture, think about the bigger picture when it comes on to immigration. The bigger picture that we're faced with today, my friends, is that this process is a, what's happening is a systematic attempt to cut down on lawful immigration. We're not just going after, the government is not just going after illegal immigration. The strategy is around lawful immigration. Lawful meaning that you're eligible. You, um, you're eligible, you have that relative or that job or whatever the case may be, you're actually eligible. But now the question is, how do we attack those people who are eligible? That's what's happening here. And so how about let's, let's, raise, let's raise those fees. That may deter some people from applying because friends, if you have to pay $1,000 for naturalization, maybe you're not, gonna, you're not gonna do it. I mean, I speak to people from time to time through consultations who say, well, the reason I haven't naturalized yet is because I just couldn't find that $640. Well, and, and you may need to petition for a relative as a US citizen, yet you're sitting on citizenship. So you're sitting on this thing and it's just getting worse. So see the bigger picture that the government is going after lawful immigration. They're now throwing in naturalization in the mix, okay? Uh, so when 
Um, when you think about it from that angle that lawful immigration is under attack, you have to ask yourself the question of, um, you know, this thing has to get done and sacrifices need to be made. You need to get it done. You need to work with a lawyer or for some people you will do it on your own. Now, when you think about doing it on your own friends, something interesting that I've been seeing recently, as you know, I've been talking a lot about denials, denial of the I-485. And just this week, I published a video about denial uh, of the I-751. Serious consequences attached to those kinds of denials. And so I've been getting emails and messages. I'm, a lot of you um, have faced denials and you're stuck. You worked with either some person who doesn't know what he or she is doing or you did it on your own and it sunk you even deeper, um, sunk you deeper into this process and in a mess. And I see a lot of mess every day that people bring to me because things got messy. Why did things get messy? Because they did it on their own or they work with someone who didn't know what he or she was doing. Why? Because they wanted to save some money. Okay. So Given the bigger picture of what's happening with the Trump administration um, and you're thinking you want to save money, you want to do it on your own, or you want to work with someone who will charge you $300, $500 to do it for you, yet the consequence is denial, denied. Denial have, has consequences. Friends, why would you go down that road? Is it to save a few dollars? Because it's getting more expensive. You can't avoid it. It, you just cannot avoid it. It's getting harder. That's a fact. So why are you thinking, I just want to do it myself. I want to do it myself because I just can't, I can't afford to hire a lawyer or I really want to, but I can't afford to hire a lawyer yet. I can afford to buy um, expensive sneakers or I could afford to, um, you know, drive a very fancy car but you can't afford to scrape up a few dollars to pay a credible licensed attorney to move things forward for you with your life, okay? So my question to you tonight is, if you had an illness and you knew you needed an operation, I want you to listen to this carefully. If you had an illness and you know that you need an operation, are you going to go on Google or on YouTube and find someone who's teaching you how to operate on yourself and then you proceed to operate on yourself? That's basically what some people are doing when they think about their immigration situation because some people are in deep waters. Their process is not simple, yet they want to do it on their own, and it just sinks them even deeper. So there's a reason why some of us, why we have a license to do this work, because friends, the stakes are too high. Stakes are too high for you to do this on your own. Now, yes, you can file a citizenship application. That's something that, honestly, we rarely do around here, because you could do that on your own. We work on things that really require a lot of thought, strategy skill, experience, and all of that, okay? Things that you shouldn't be doing on your own. Sometimes I tell people, do this on your own. You don't need me. I don't do that. I'm not going to work with you on that. You could handle that. Easy, easy, easy. Do it yourself. But for the most part, friends, I must tell you, uh, like 90% of the time, honestly, it's a problem that the person can't resolve on his or her own. So that's why I want to admonish you tonight that when you think about immigration, you have to realize that you're under a different environment, an environment that is attacking lawful immigration. And if you attempt to do your own, nat um, uh, not naturalization, yes, you could do that on your own. Don't need me. But when you're thinking about adjustment of status, things are getting harder. And your situation may not be the common, the, the, the ordinary, easy case, okay? So you don't operate on yourself because you might get really injured. That's what I want to leave you with. Whether you work with me or someone else doesn't really matter. 
don't have to work with me. You, but my point is work with a lawyer. Don't just see me on YouTube and think you can do this on your own because attorney uh, Latoya McBean Pompey is teaching you a thing or two. And then you feel empowered and then you go out and you try to do it on your own. But then you realize it's actually a lot more harder than you thought. And friends, sometimes people don't listen carefully and they don't read carefully. So they make mistakes. So you don't want to do this and operate on your own in this environment that you are living under now. You need to get someone who is licensed, someone who's on top of what's happening, and someone who is working on these issues, the same issues that you're faced with, okay? No longer can you just go to some man in some neighborhood that your parent used 20 years ago to get a green card. They're not all amazing. So work with whoever you want to, whoever makes you feel great about and confident and secure that this person is credible and not just taking your money just to take your money and misleading you. So friends, thanks um, for watching. And before I go, I want to tell you guys that, do you guys know that it, you, uh, I have a little deal going on right now, $150 off legal fees. Um, if you hire us before December 31st, it's a holiday offer that um, I have going. So if you hire us between now and December 31st, I will knock off $150 off your legal fees, but you must start off with a consultation so that I could dissect your problem and understand what we should do in your case. Um, so everyone starts off with a consultation. So there's that. And then also friends, um, get on my email list. I sent out a really great blog this week about the I-485 denial. Get on my email list. I'm going to put a link to it. Get on that list so that you will be part of that community that gets more information from me each week. And friends, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you for um, being part of this community. Thank you for your comments. You, you're sending me terrific ideas for the videos and they're helping so many people. So many people are being helped by this. And I'm just so blessed to be part of this journey with you. So friends, don't wait to file your applications for adjustment of status and uh, citizenship. Do it before the fee increase goes into effect. Also, see the bigger picture. The Trump administration is targeting legal immigration. And so don't get caught up in that. And don't just focus on case processing times. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Thanks so very much for watching and have a terrific weekend. Bye-bye.